Hello Minions, Wheezy here again, and today I'm actually just going to kind of do a uh, an update video. I was sitting here thinking, uh, I should post something, I don't have anything super compelling right now, um, at least as far as like gameplay for like Modern Warfare, I'm in the process of doing my Alien Isolation gameplay, I just got Jedi Fallen Order, which I'm excited to get into, so I'll start posting that. Um, but I was like, you know what, I gotta. I think I'll do an update video just so people understand that I've got things in the works. Uh, I've mentioned stuff like this during some of my streams and other videos. Um, but I figured I'd make a video and just put it all out there and talk about it. So um, I'm just going to get right into it. I may roll in some other, I've got some stuff queued up here in case I want to pull in some gameplay of some upcoming games. I just kind of want to talk you through uh, what I'm, where I'm going and, and what's happening here. I know I've had some of these before where it's a little bit more nebulous, but I've got like a super like concrete plan right now. Uh, for what I'm going to do for it, I got a document here where I'm like, got video ideas and a roadmap for upcoming games like Cold War and um, new games that are going to be coming out Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Far Cry 6, new Gran Turismo games, new, like, cool stuff. So, um, so I guess to just jump in the thing that's first on top of my head right now, which is, um, there's, we're kind of coming to end of life of Modern Warfare, um, and I captured all of this gameplay for all of these weapons in Modern Warfare, and I was, you know, put out a few of a very small handful of weapon tactics videos. Some of the key ones, actually, I put out a Bruin build video before the Bruin really became the meta in Call of Duty. Um, put out an SP208 video, which was good. I put out a video on the FAL before the FAL got buffed, which was a coincidence because the FAL was garbage when I used it. Um, Anyway, the point being, I, I, I didn't really have a plan and a, and a production schedule down to really get that stuff churned out. And we're so late in the, in the life cycle of Modern Warfare right now, there's not much point in me going and producing, spending a lot of hours producing weapon tactics videos for a game that's about to mostly become dead when Cold War comes out in a couple of weeks. Um, so I've been putting effort into building a roadmap for Cold War so that I don't make that same mistake so I can kind of be producing useful content as it's relevant in the game. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, turning my solo, like my single player game time into interesting videos is something that I've been enjoying. Um, getting around to the 2014 Alien Isolation, uh, being a huge Alien fan, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> like uh, the fact that that's like been the best alien game in like forever and I and I bought it like when it was brand new I got it at release played it a little bit and it kind of stressed me out and I kind of like set it on the shelf and then didn't come back to it for literally six years um, I'm enjoying that playthrough I'm gonna finish uh, going through that um, but I also don't want to get like stuck in a single game and feel like that's my job uh, either because that's going to show not just in the videos and stuff but in my production schedule. Um, I've got already got a episode 4 of that edited and rendered that's ready to get uploaded. Um, I uploaded episode 3 yesterday so I didn't want to turn around and do episode 4 right, right, right away the next day. Um, so I'm thinking I might start playing Jedi Fallen Order a little bit, and then I can kind of intermix those as I'm making progress. Um, so that'll be as far as like the story time and the cinematic gameplays. Um, that's kind of that. And then Assassin's Creed Valhalla comes out in a couple of weeks. Um, I originally, and I guess I'm going to get, get to it all at the same time, I originally uh, pre-ordered that, the disc version, because I still, when I can, I enjoy owning a physical copy of the game. I like having a disc that I can have is for a couple of reasons uh one is it's nice if you have a game and you want to go back and sell it to be able to pull some money out of it digitally you can't really do that um also i don't right now have my playstation 4 any of my playstation 4s in my house set up as my primary ps4 which means that if my internet goes down i can't play any digital games <laughs> um and i can get into more of that at some point I'll do a different video to talk about what's happened in my life in the last five years. For those of you who haven't been around uh, a long time, um, I started posting on this channel, what, like 9, 10, 11 years ago. And then for, you know, like a little over, what's well, almost been two years I've been posting again now, so, which is weird. Um, a little over a year ago, I started posting again after being gone for like literally three or four years. Um, a whole lot happened in my life in that time that I just kind of, have glossed over, I haven't really addressed directly. I'll do that in a different video. Um, but so I'm kind of getting back into the into the, in the flow of things. So um, 
I originally <laughs> pre-ordered Assassin's Creed Valhalla from a PS4 uh, on a disc, but and Valhalla is one of those games that's going to be the next-gen upgrade, so it's going to jump from PS4 to PS5. I Sony makes me sad. I love Sony. I, I did a stream. It wasn't a good stream because I fucked up the audio part of it. But I was so excited about the PS5, they did an event where they revealed the PS5 price, right? And I streamed that on my channel. That's how excited I was for it. In that event, they did not mention when pre-orders were going to become available or what the means were that they were going to take pre-orders. I had no idea that there was like a queue system through the official Sony site that you could sign up for and then they might randomly pick you to receive an opportunity to buy a pre-order. I didn't know when the pre-orders were going to happen. And like a day or two after that event, I just woke up in the morning and my news feed was just full of people complaining about how they missed the PS5 pre-orders. And I was like, wait, what? So I... I was one of those people, I didn't, it's not even like I knew the pre-orders were happening and I didn't get one. I had absolutely no idea that they were going to happen. And I cared. I was paying attention, <laughs> right? And I managed to miss it and uh, did not snag a PS5 pre-order. Um, still haven't, um, which makes me sad. I'm going to definitely get a PS5, um, but I'll touch on, I'll touch on that uh, as to when I'm going to. But... Then Microsoft, a few days later, was like, haha, we're not going to be as stupid as Sony. Here's when our pre-orders are going live. So I like was like, well, shit, I definitely need to get this. Like, I was already planning on getting the Series X and the uh, PS5. Um, I just knew I was going to. So I'm bummed that I haven't snagged a PS5 launch, launch console. Uh, that said, I, I set an alarm. I waited for the, you know, I was sitting and refreshing for the Xbox Series X. All of the websites that I was keeping an eye on were fucked when that went live. Like, Amazon didn't do a great job of having a page that went live. I try to stay away from GameStop as much as possible. I don't want to give them my money if I can avoid it. The official Microsoft website ended up being um, the winner for me. So I got a Series X pre-order through Microsoft, which is which I'm the most happy about. Because if anyone's not going to flake on their pre-orders, it's going to be Microsoft, right? They will say, fuck you, GameStop. You can have a few fewer consoles. We are going to fulfill our orders <laughs> through our own website. So I got a Series X pre-order uh, through Microsoft itself. And then while everybody, like after I got my Series X, I was like, oh, thank God. I, I've at least got a console for the pre-order, and I'm just excited, because I'm just a nerd. It's not like I have anything like I'm super duper excited about day one. I'm just wandering around. Um, but my, my nerd heart needed to have one. This is, this is the second time this has happened for me with Sony, by the way. When the PS3 pre-orders came up way back in the day, PS3, not PS4, PS3, uh, I was um, in Costa Rica when they ran the pre-orders, so I couldn't pre-order. And then I ended up, when I got back to the States, um, the next console that was available for pre-order was the uh, Wii, the Nintendo Wii. So I went and pre-ordered a Wii, even though I had really no interest in it, just because I needed to pre-order something. <laughs> and I was supremely disappointed when I got the Wii. <laughs> and now it's, and, and it broke somewhere along the line, so now it doesn't even work. Anyway, aside from the point, I'm, I'm bummed, but I got the Series X just because I want to have, and, and so I switched my Assassin's Creed Valhalla pre-order from the PS4 to the Xbox One because I have an Xbox One X. And so I'll have Valhalla, but actually it comes out the same day as the Xbox Series X. So essentially what'll happen is I'll have the Valhalla disc <laughs> and for the Xbox One, and then I can stick that disc straight in my Series X and it will download the updated Series X version of that game for free. So I can play it on the One on my One X or my Series X, it's going to be so hard getting those names straight. Fucking Microsoft with their goddamn naming conventions. Ever since the 360, they have just been fucking insane trying to not be a number behind Sony. Different issue for a different day. So, Assassin's Creed Valhalla coming up on the list. Um, Series X. There's, especially at launch, there's really nothing uh, Series X exclusive or even, like day one launch day that I'm excited about, really for either console. The best game out there that kind of like sticks out, like that might be a fun game to try, is Miles Morales on the PS5. That's a PS5 exclusive, and it's a day one launch game. But I never played the 
Spider-Man game for PS4, even though I know it got universally great reviews and it was apparently a fantastic game. In fact, there was a time when I was buying and flipping PlayStations and stuff like through Facebook Marketplace. I bought uh, my PS4 Slim, I believe, that I have right now out in the living room. Uh, came with a copy of uh, the dude who was selling it. it was like, here's Spider-Man and like UFC, and I sold them on eBay. Like, I didn't even play them. <laughs> like, I just, I just wasn't really interested in it. So, Miles Morales seems like an okay game. Like, I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic game. And PS5 and all that stuff. But I don't have a PS5. <laughs> I don't have that game. And I'm not super interested in it anyway. Um, same thing, Series X. I want to have a console at launch, but there's not really like a next-gen title that I just have to have. Um, but, um, having the Series X and then being able to play Valhalla on that is going to be cool because I'm going to play the Valhalla anyway. So, might as well play it on the new console, new graphics, see how that all works. I've already got my capture set up. Should, unless there's something weird with like the HDMI like 2.2 HDCP standard or something like that that's going to make my video capture break. <laughs> uh, I should still be able to play in 4K, capture in 1080p, and get and get stuff posted for that. It'll be interesting with Assassin's Creed. It doesn't have a traditional narrative structure usually how it works. Those games are huge. Um, I just uh, not too long ago beat uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, I was behind on that as well. Um, so I'm, I'm, my, I'm gonna try and do a story time for that just because I'll be doing single player stuff so I might as well capture it and post something interesting. But I don't want to post like 400 side missions and like one story mission like in every video because that's kind of how Assassin's Creed plays. So we'll see how that how that goes. But that's that's on that list too. Um, depending on if there's a compelling reason to get a PS5 relatively shortly out of the gate, I will consider paying scalper prices on eBay for a PS5 if I have a reason to get a PS5. Like if there's something that turns out to be just really worth it, um, I'm willing to do that. But Again, there's nothing that's super compelling for me that's going to make me want to go and do that out of the gate. And the further down the road you get from those initial scalping prices, the lower the scalping prices will get until there's actual either availability at stores or until the scalpers aren't, you know, are charging less. But anyway, what kind of, uh, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the near term stuff that I'm working on. Um, I've got a bit of a video roadmap for Cold War stuff I'm going to touch. Matter of fact, just because you're looking at my face and talking here, I'm going to go ahead and throw Cold War trailer up in the corner there. Oh, I need to get my, I'm kind of like offset here. <laughs> let, me, let me adjust my little stupid face here. Actually, all right. Oh, oh, and I turn my monitor off. This is this has instantly become a disaster. I'm gonna slide that over there so I'm framed properly. <laughs> I know you guys really care. Um, so yeah, this I may even crank that down just a little bit more because it's not not the audio that's as compelling. But this is like the actually I think this is the the one they did in this in the PS4 uh, reveal event or the PS4 price reveal event that uh, oh I need to turn my my actual computer down that's why it's weird it's not the it's not the balance in the video <laughs> that's the issue um yeah so this is what i've talked about where it, like the campaign looks like it's inside the modern warfare engine it looks like it's gonna be great so my roadmap kind of for cold war in addition to doing a story time for the cold war campaign um because i'm basically somebody playing through campaigns i've i've always enjoyed the modern war or the call of duty campaigns even though they're not really like groundbreaking the COD 4 campaign definitely stood out as being like the first, one of the first really good Call of Duty campaigns that I actually like enjoyed the campaign, had some meaningful moments in it. Modern Warfare 2 kind of, but only because of like the shock factor, like the airport level, uh, no Russian. Um, other than that, they're kind of forgettable. <laughs> um, so this, it'll be fun to play. Um, so I'll do a story time for that, um, as well as a cinematic gameplay. Uh, for multiplayer, I've got kind of a better roadmap. Instead of getting deep into like, here's here's a weapon, here's all the upgrades for it, here's, you know, there are people out there whose entire channels are kind of dedicated to doing that kind of technical breakdown. I don't have the time or the bandwidth, still having a full-time job, to um, compete with them. Like they, as soon as new weapons come out, they tear through, do a full update video, and like the next day they have like a full detailed video set up. I, I can't compete with that, so I shouldn't even try. There's no reason for me to release a video two weeks or a month or a month later, right? For information you guys already got somewhere else. Um, so rather than doing that, 
Uh, I want to focus on... I'm changing the, the channel, and I'm going to do some rebranding here. Um, where there's going to be two main... Uh, kind of a new motto of Wheezy's Gaming. Kind of the two pillars. I, when I started posting it, I post about the three pillars. Two big pillars that I want to build uh, into every video going forward is... Um, have fun, play hard, right? Because that's what I enjoy. I like playing video games because they're fun, first and foremost. And then I like being good at those games. It's a lot more fun for me to play a first person shooter if I don't suck at it. So I want to post videos that help you guys enjoy these games and do well at them, especially if you don't have your entire life to spend digging into these games, right? So most of the people that you probably enjoy watching, excluding myself, <laughs> that are really good gamers. Um, it's like mastering anything else. These people play, you know, like a full-time job, six, eight, ten hours of video games a day, every day, for months and months. Like, there are people that have been playing Warzone since it came out, eight hours a day. They're gonna be better at Warzone than I am. They just are. And that's okay, I'm not offended by that. If you have a real life, <laughs> and you wanna figure out how to get good at games without spending 80 hours a week, playing video games, then I'm your guy. That's where I, that's the direction I'm taking. So, um, a couple of things. One, I'm going to make videos that will help you figure out the most efficient ways to unlock things, to rank things up. Um, the, the things that are the most fun about games, I spent a lot of time with some of these weapon tactics videos doing things that aren't fun, like playing with really shitty weapons. <laughs> and uh, I have reasons for that. Like, that kind of stuff can speak to me on a level. But, but I'm going to change my focus to, like, how can... If you have a little bit of time to play a game, if you have a, like an hour a night or something like that, or a few hours a week, what can you do to make your, your gaming time way more fun? So that's kind of the direction of what I'm going to be doing with Cold War and just kind of games in general. Um, I'll go ahead and throw Valhalla up there just because. Why not? We're already talking about it. Do you want to restart where you left off? No, I don't. Just start from the beginning. Um, Valhalla looks cool. You know, not just because it's next gen, but... It's a very different tone. Uh, I heard them say that the developer for Valhalla is the same one that did Origins, which was the one that was in Egypt. Uh, I enjoyed that one. Um, that one very, felt very last gen. Odyssey was fantastic, and it felt like the you know, latest gen. It felt like kind of the peak of last gen as far as what an Assassin's Creed game did as, in terms of graphics and gameplay. I really loved Odyssey. Um, so I'll be playing this. I've played nearly every Assassin's Creed game since the very first one. Um, Assassin's Creed... The one that I did two... The, like, the first Assassin's Creed game on PS4, which was... I don't think it was Bro Brotherhood. Maybe it was. There was Rogue and Brotherhood. I didn't play one of them, and one of them I started to play when I did the two episodes of uh, Grab Assassins. <laughs> um, it was an awful, <laughs> an awful iteration of Assassin's Creed. I didn't even finish it. Um... And then I kind of got away from Assassin's Creed series for a while, and then just, you know, in the last year, I finally went back and played Odyssey, which, which I, not Odyssey, uh, yeah, uh, no, Origins, Origins, Egypt one, because it always looked cool when it came out, and at that time I was just kind of distracted with other games, so I went back and played Origins, and then I was like, oh, that was really good, so then I grabbed Odyssey, and I was like, oh, that's really good, so now I'm excited for Assassin's Creed again, it's, it's getting back into that cycle of where I'm really enjoying it, um, and my son Seb actually wants to uh, play Assassin's Creed Odyssey, so I think this upcoming weekend he's going to play a little bit. Um, I even recorded some gameplay that he and I had the other day where we were playing some Portal 2 co-op together. So I may or may not post some of that just because it's kind of fun. Um, so that's uh, yeah, that's more stuff I'm excited about. Um, what else? There's some other stuff coming up, so let's go ahead and... So looking further into the future, uh, Far Cry 6 is uh, I've enjoyed the Far Cry games since about Far Cry 3, I think it was? No, it was Far Cry 4. The one where your guns broke all the time, which was irritating, um, but I enjoyed the game. Um, so I like the Far Cry series. I'm looking forward to that. Um, that's going to be a story time because Far Cry has multiplayer, but that never really interested me. Um, the gameplay in Far Cry is fun. Especially when they support the co-op, if I ever get John Jacob online to play with or something like that. Playing co-op, Far Cry is fun, but I just enjoy the single player campaign. It's a good good first person shooter with some cool storytelling. Um, another cross-platform one. Uh, one that I'm surprisingly surprised, or surprisingly excited for. 
Hogwarts Legacy. Oh my god, like that. I can't... I'm gonna... I don't know. Like, I'm not like a huge Harry Potter fan. I love Harry Potter. Like, I've read the books, seen the movies, played like the Lego Harry Potter games. But this looks so much fun. I can't... I can't even... I don't even... I'm like nerding out about it. I don't even know why. I'm not... It's not like... It's like third person magic game. I don't know why. But it just looks... This looks awesome. I don't know. I'm looking forward to that. I think that's sometime next year. Um, that'll be fun. Uh, PS5 exclusive. Horizon Forbidden West. So, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. My daughter started playing like oh, like two years ago, and then we kind of got away from it. I downloaded it, and I downloaded it because it was like on sale on PSN for like super cheap. And I was like, I'll play it. And he's like, oh, that looks cool. And I was like, you know what? You should play through the campaign. And then I'll watch you play the campaign. And that'd be, like, super cool. Like, my daughter playing a video game and watch, like... Usually I'm the one playing through and, like, someone's, like, maybe watching the campaign through me. Like, with the Uncharted games. I also just finished Uncharted 4, finally. Um, and Last of Us Part 2. So... So that... I'm excited for this. But that said... She still hasn't finished it. We started kind of playing it a little bit more, but I, I haven't I'm like, the second one's going to come out before you finish the first one. We need to... I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the dad that's like going to my daughter and being like, we need to play video games tonight because we have to finish this game. No, don't do your homework. We need to play video games. Um, so I'm excited for that. I'm excited to finish the first Horizon. I don't think we're very far into it. Evie's like, we've been playing it a bunch. We're probably making good progress. I think we're like six hours into the game, and it's probably like a 50-hour game. So, there's that. Uh, what else? Uh, Gran Turismo. I am a huge um, sim racing fan. I say huge. I'm a big sim racing fan. I've played sim racing games since the original Gran Turismo and always loved them um to the point where i love them so much arcade racing games bug me um so wait what did i oh, i was jumping into the menu there yeah so i'm looking forward to that i have to my great shame i actually kind of in general have enjoyed forza more than gran turismo recently so i'm excited for the next forza for xbox that's another one that i missed i got forza 6 just like a year ago when it became a free game for Xbox Live Gold. Um, and Forza 7 has been already been out for like over a year or whatever. So I've completely like missed Forza 7. I completely missed Forza 5. I think I played Forzas 2, 3, and 4 like was in when I was in the Xbox 360 kind of generation. And maybe even not Forza 4. Was Forza 4 on 360? Well, I only played the Xbox 360 Forza games. Um, which was at least two and three. It may have been may have been two, three, and four. Um, I've played a little bit of six, not a ton. Um, I have it on the Xbox One X because, like I said, it was free, um, and I still haven't. I've been playing other games, so I haven't had the 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 motivation to get Forza Seven just because Forza Six is still fun, and I'm barely have played it, so I'm not going to go and buy another Forza game. Um, and you know, so when the next one comes out on the Series X, I'll definitely get it uh, at launch, most likely. This is the Halo Infinite trailer. Um, it keeps popping up the name of the files at the bottom of the screen, so I guess I don't really have to explain it to you. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just pulling up videos that I've saved. I was going to do a video specifically where I just brought up some of these trailers to do to talk about upcoming games I'm excited about, which I guess is kind of what this is becoming. Um, but the idea was, is that like the same kind of bird intro from like Horizon? Is this Horizon? No, that's Horizon. Oh, I got I got the name wrong. I downloaded the wrong video. This is Horizon again. If I fail, I guess I don't have the Halo Infinite <laughs> one. We'll just we'll just throw on the Series X trailer because it's gonna have some Halo shit in it. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of all over the place, but I guess that's the idea behind doing a, an update video like this. You gonna get into some stuff? Yeah, talky talky. Talky talky happy happy. Um, yeah, is there anything else really of value I can put into this video? I've kind of given you guys an idea of what I'm doing going forward. I'd love your feedback on what you guys enjoy. I'm trying to create content that I enjoy making so that that carries through in the videos, my enthusiasm, my excitement. Um, I also like you guys' input at the same time, you know, I've because I started this channel like 10 years ago. And uh, 
I had like 2,000 subscribers and then I disappeared for three years. Most of my 2,000, I still have like 1,900 subscribers who are my subscribers from eight years ago. <laughs> and their accounts are probably long dead or they're just ignoring my videos because whatever, they just haven't unsubscribed or whatever. The point is, since I started posting a year and a half ago or whatever, since I started reposting, I have lost <laughs> like a hundred subscribers just because people are like, "Oh, this fucking guy." Yeah, well, that was that was years ago. So that said, part of my, you know, going forward, the content that I'm going to be building is going to be a little bit different than where I kind of started out. At least as far as just kind of playing games with my friends and it just being random audio chat. There's going to be a lot more. Hey, I'm an older man now who doesn't sit down every night and play video games. How can we have fun playing video games? Get better at video games in a in an efficient, <laughs> time constructive kind of way, because uh, that's my life now. Um, that end already? Yeah. All right. Good. Thanks for your help. <laughs> Here, let's throw on the uh, let's throw on the PS5's Dual Sense. I mean, maybe I'll get one just because I want to play with that new controller. But the haptic feedback on the triggers is something that's going to be really fun to use in like Gran Turismo. That's one thing that that. Without an actual like good feet like uh, force feedback wheel, I used to have one for the for the PS3 slash four Gran Turismo racing wheel. Without a good force feedback wheel, there is a big disconnect in how well you can kind of intuitively play games like Forza and Gran Turismo. Just because without that haptic feedback, it, it when you're driving a car, it can be hard to it can be hard to kind of like make that translate. Uh, I firmly am a believer because I've I've seen it in my life and I've seen other people do it. Games like Gran Turismo and Forza, if you play simulation racing games and you play them without all the assists turned on, it makes you a better driver in real life. Like, for seriously. Um, it's part of what, you know, as my daughter gets old enough where she's getting to the point where she's getting ready to drive, I'm going to get a full racing setup um, and get her to start playing simulation games so that she gets used to driving, especially being in Colorado. If you know how to drift a car in a racing game, you are a lot more capable of driving on snow and ice. It's just, it translates directly. It's extremely valuable to have. I am, oh my god, have I been talking for 27 minutes? Wow. I'm just running my goddamn mouth off. Um, <laughs> I should probably draw it to a close since I'm just rambling, but anyway, that's kind of the game update video of, of things going forward. Um, I got a plan for video content that's going to be useful, it's going to be providing helpful tips, not just, hey, watch me play video games. Um, you know, I'm really enjoying the idea of doing these story times where I commentate, kind of a, let's, a traditional let's play where I'm, where I'm commentating as I'm playing through a game, which is, for me, enjoyable to watch even when I go back through it too, but also at the same time editing up cinematic gameplays so that I can go back and revisit a game after the fact and just watch it like a movie. Um, I'm enjoying doing that, so there's a lot of a lot of stuff I'm excited about that's getting me motivated to start producing content on a more regular basis, so you've probably seen that over the last week where I've been posting more content regularly. Um, so I'm planning on that continuing, you know, and, and as much as life doesn't interfere, I do, I do still have a full-time job, you know, uh, doing consulting uh, in software. Um, I work from home, so it does give me time when I, you know, take a lunch break to, to play a little bit of video games or when something's compiling for an amount of time uh, or there's just kind of a bit of a down cycle, you know, since my office is where I game, you know, I've got my work computers here and I've got my captured game here and i got my consoles there, like, it's easy to be like, okay, time for a lunch break, so let's, let's do an hour stream. Um, so at least for now, until the world unfucks itself and opens back up and I start traveling again, I've got some more leeway to do that stuff. But anyway, I'm going to stop now and let you guys go about your day. And I would love to hear your feedback about anything. What do you like? What do you not like? What are you excited for going forward? Um, another thing I'm going to touch on briefly is I'm going to try and start pulling in more community stuff. Like, I can't do this all myself, so if you guys are, like, playing games and you have capture setups, like, I know uh, I know ANCAP does, um, then let's, like, fucking, like, if you are playing a game that I'm not playing, like, let's let's get let's get the audiences together and put that stuff together. I've got my website, wheeziesgaming.com, which is a place where I want people to be able to go. They want to get a consolidated set of, like, tips. Like, here's... Here's, if you want to get good at this game, this game, I'm not going to be playing every game, so I want to be able to leverage the community to help provide content for stuff too, so. So I got, I got dreams, I got goals, I got, I got a way forward, and, uh, I'm going to get there, we're going to get there, and, uh, I'm excited for it, so, 
I will leave it there, and I will talk to you guys soon. Oh, goodbye.